This is Bianca Ketter here with STD.com, The Student Voice. I'm here today at the Foundation of Life Evangelical Ministries with Pastor Peterson. Tell me, Pastor Peterson, what inspired you to become a reverend? Oh, this has been a motivation, you know, from my youthful stage. In the first place, I've been in the Catholic mission for like five years as a mission boy, and I always love God and I want to express my love to God. That is what actually prompted me to try to become a pastor. And I thank God that dream has been fulfilled to the glory of God. Okay. What is your goal for you, man? Okay, well, we are aiming at expanding the word of God, first in Maryland and then the entire United States. That's our goal and our intention, to make sure we establish a very solid foundation for the community and the entire United States in general. That's our prior motive. And uh, we are achieving that goal right now, gradually, see, because we don't have to look down upon a humble beginning. It's not a large church yet, but at least we have a substantial amount of very dedicated and devoted members. So we give God the glory for that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Then you will speak righteousness. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise exactly. Jesus. Now we are in testimony time. Who has the born in testimony? Testimonies are the heart of God. The heart of God. What God is doing. And what only God does. Only Him. Only Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And 
and I thought something was wrong, so I went to, I left my classroom and went to another classroom, and still I was feeling the same, had the same feeling, so I decided, they decided to call the principal, and she said, well, as long as it's anything to deal with the heart, or to deal with your chest, or any problem with your body, we have to call the ambulance. So they called the ambulance, and they took me to the hospital. And they did all the tests they had to do, and thank God, all of them came out negative. Um, it was anxiety. Um, I had anxiety because of stress that I've been going through, but I give God the praise that it was nothing to do with heart attack or anything that is, that is um, crucial to my life. So I just want to give God the praise and thank Him and say that He should continue to, to um, strengthen me so that I will continue to be strengthened in His Word and, and do the work that He wants me to do. In behalf of a friend of mine, I thank God for her life. She's not here. I prayed for her all last night. I thought about her in my quiet moment. But I just want to thank God for her life. She is in this country. She came here. She don't have nobody here. But God make a way for her. And I thank God when I look at her and I look at her kids that she had. We went to nursing school together. She was my roommate. We stayed in the same room. We fight every day. But we came to each other until we came here. So I just want to thank God for her life. I thank God for her family. I also thank God for the first time. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to appreciate each and every one of you that is here this morning and I believe that God has something for you. And I know that you are not here by mistake. God is always planning ahead of his children and he directs their path. So if you are here this morning, you are appreciated. God bless you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And I pray that your ears will be attentive to the word of God. Because the purpose where we are here for is to get food for the soul. Not food for the flesh. Food for the soul. Hallelujah. Food for the soul. So now let's turn our Bible to the book of John. John 14, 27. What was the scripture said? Please. Not as the world give, give it. Give I unto you, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah. Amen. My topic this morning is, let not your heart be troubled. Let not. Hallelujah. Amen. When the Bible says let not, it means that there is a responsibility. Amen. Let not. Because why you have to let? You have to allow. So let is to allow. To give a chance, to give an opportunity. Hallelujah. So when the Bible says, let not your heart be troubled, it means that you have a responsibility to not allow your heart to be troubled. Amen. Praise the living God. Amen. That's very, very vital. Jesus speaks and he speaks most of the time. If we turn to another part of the Bible, to the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto your status? <laughs> Which of us can add one cubit to our status? If I'm five feet, what can I do to make it five feet seven? No. There is nothing, absolutely, hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible is emphasizing, Jesus is emphasizing that we should not take thought on what we should eat or what we should do. He said, do not be troubled. You know, it is a very, very powerful time to tell somebody not to be troubled. Mm -hmm. yeah. The why God wants you to be in perfect peace, that is the reason why he created man. That's the purpose for your being here. Hallelujah. Amen. This is not by mistake. And if God, if the Bible says, do, do not let your heart be troubled, as I said earlier, there is a responsibility that you have to perform. There is something that you have to do. Hallelujah. Amen. So, what do you have to do? The Bible says, according to the bulletin, it said, uh, guard your hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. It said, guard your heart. From, from the heart comes the issues of life. That means what? It is not every thought that you have to entertain in your heart. Yes. Not every thought. If you are entertaining every thought, then you become, you become a polluted tank. Because the Bible says, as a man did here, so is he. If you keep standing and thinking about evil things, then you 
become a deep oppressor. If you start thinking about oppression, then you walk around oppressed. If you start thinking about problems, then you pass around you have too much problems. There are certain times when I have problems, I just decide to forget about them. Just forget about them. I don't entertain thinking about those problems because they are a poison in my system. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why remove the load, put it aside. Leave it, leave it so that God will work on it. Yes, Praise the living God. Amen. There are certain problems that I encounter in work. So some because sometimes I do I, well we use computers. I, I get the problem with a certain situation or something I have to do, I will leave it. The Bible says it's the most crafty animal that you can ever think about. Hallelujah. The serpent is wise when it comes to tricking human beings. So that is why we should guard our lives because from it the issues of life come. If you don't guard your heart, you will always be in trouble. Hallelujah. There are a lot of things, a lot of reasons why we should guard our hearts. It's not only for problem. It's also to avoid us from involving into certain things that we should not get ourselves involved to end up in a regretting place. Praise the living God. Amen. There are certain things that you don't have to entertain. You just have to put them aside. So this morning my message will be, do not, don't let your heart, don't be troubled. Take trouble away. Do not allow your heart to be troubled. Do not allow your heart to be bothered. Do not hold heavy things in your heart. For they are not good for the heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. So when my sister came here this morning, she says she's pressed out. I say, oh God, is he? God is wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he wants a body to be lifted up. He now decided to bring something like this. Hallelujah. Amen. And I believe by the grace of God, before we leave to, today, I pray that God will give me the enough time to be able to explain this message. Amen. And then everybody will feel light. Amen. You know that your, your mind is a doorway. Thoughts mm -hmm. come. They pass by. Amen. Everyone that you decide to entertain will take position. Yes. Will change your life. Will pattern your life the way you want it to be. If it's a thought from the devil, then you are in trouble. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is the reason why you are most, that is why the Bible says, think about this war. Let it be within you day and night. Because it is the word of God that will give your soul food and give you strength. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 There is one man in the Bible who knows how to entertain the thoughts that come into his mind. And that man is David. Let us look at what he said in his, in his work. In, in, his, in his Psalms, one of his Psalms that he wrote. Uh, Psalm 27. He said, the Lord, Psalm 27 verse 1. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He was in deep trouble. He was in very serious trouble when he wrote this Psalm. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength, the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, and my foes come upon me to eat me up, to eat up my flesh, then they will what? Stumble and they will fall. So if your heart is right with God, the enemy will have nothing to do with you. If you control your thoughts life, and put it in the things of God. When you are thinking a good thing about somebody, somebody is planning evil behind you, then you don't have to worry. It is not your battle. Amen. It's right. Thank you. It is not your battle. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you decide to carry that battle, you want to become the manager of the world. And you cannot manage the world. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot. That is the reason why when there is something that is going on in your life, you have to take thoughts and begin to think about the scriptures. Think about an equality scripture, encourage yourself in the word of God. And that will super, super, will supersede the power of the devil in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So then he says, he said, when the enemy come to eat me up, because I am currently in the word of God, I am thinking about God. Yeah, it's just like somebody is planning to launch a satanic attack against you and you find you pray. Yeah. They find you pray. When they find you pray, there's nothing they can do. Or you go show you, you will have to go back. <laughs> the mistake they are of death that is sent to come and launch an attack will have to go back. I can see right now as I'm standing here, I can feel that thing that when the guy was sent to engineer to go and launch the spirit of madness upon those couple, they found them pain. Hallelujah. Amen. And when they found them pain, there's nothing I can do. They have to return. The angel of God showed up at the door. He said, Church, not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. Why? Because they found them in the world. They were entertaining the word of God in their hearts. Because it's the only secure location that I can find at that time. The only secure location 
that you can be in time of desperate uh, business, uh, witchcraft or demonic attack is when you are in the house of God. And the house of God inside you. The Bible says, no more shall I dwell in houses built with what? With hands. No more. So your body, the heart, is your temple of God. I say your heart is the temple of God. When the spirit of God is within your heart, I don't care how many masquerades are surrounding you. I don't care how many flies are running after you at night. I don't care how many wisdom power is challenging you. As long as you are encamped in the house of God, there is nothing that they can do to you. They shall show the other. They shall do what they have to do. They shall perform what they have to perform. But God is a powerful God that will do all their works. By the way, God is omniscient. Hallelujah. We have to serve an omniscient God. What does omniscient mean? Yes. He knows and sees everything, God. even our most secret thoughts. God, when we used to study catechism, what is one of the things that I admire? They say, God, where is God? First of all, that's the first question. The, Bible, the, the catechism says, God is everywhere. Everywhere He is. Hallelujah. Even in our most secret thoughts, it continues. Even in our most secret thoughts, it means even in the secret thoughts of the most evil person, God is there. The Spirit of God is there to monitor the activities of demonic powers that are trying to bring your life down. This is a promise by God. I will not violate my covenants. What is that a covenant? What is a covenant? A covenant is an agreement between two people. For sometimes it's an agreement between humanity and divinity. It's an agreement between humanity and divinity. And God was very serious about his covenants. The way God demonstrated the seriousness about his covenant is to give his own son to seal that covenant. The blood of his son to seal that covenant. That's how serious God is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I say God is very serious about the covenant. He says in Psalm 89 verse 34, I will not violate my covenant or utter what my lips have uttered. I will not utter what my lips have uttered. What, what did his lips utter? About you. Once for all have I sworn by my holiness. Once and for all have I, God, sworn by my holiness. David knew this. That is why, though a host of, 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 of war encamp around him, he is not afraid. One thing he wants to be, he wants to be in the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I have sworn by my holiness, and I will not lie to who? David. I will not lie to who? David. Who is David? David is the root of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I said, David is the root of the tribe of Judah. David is the root of the tribe of Judah. So God said, I have sworn by my holiness. What? I will not utter. I will not alter. Receive. I will not alter that which I have uttered. I will not change what I have spoken. The promises that are made for David, I will not change. I have sworn by my holiness that David, his kingdom, his kingship, his leadership. Hallelujah. Let's continue. I will not lie to David that his life will continue forever and his throne endure before me like the sun. When God has made this kind of promise, promise and you know that you are inside this promise, you are inside this covenant. And by the way, it is very important for me in church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. The reason why, if somebody leaves a covenant with you, you see, if somebody leaves a will for you, when they are leaving the will, you want to be there. Oh, yes. The will is this book. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The will, what God has left for you, is all in this book. It depends on the level at which you take it. How you appreciate it. How you accept it. That is how it's going to impact your life. Right. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It will seem as if all is lost. Uh -huh. That is how sometimes the devil presents your bishops. Yes, that is all over. If they present that same picture to Jesus Christ mm -hmm. they, before the disciples, they hang him on the cross, mm -hmm. nail him publicly, mm -hmm. crucify him and dis dis kill him in a shameful death. But finally, if he had known, he should not have done that. But that was what, because that was what empowered Jesus 
to go down to it and take the key from him. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Yeah. Hallelujah! That is how powerful the death that he created cause to happen. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. So David had an understanding of his position in Christ, his position in God. He knows that his, his line, God said, your line will be before me like the sun. Yes, no. I have sworn by my holiness. Once have I spoken, and I will not utter, never will I lie to David. David's representation today is you and me here. Hallelujah. Because we are partakers of that covenant. It's the new covenant that God is talking about here. It's not about the old covenant. The covenant of Jesus Christ. When God talks about the covenant, the covenant between him and David is talking about the covenant of the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, which you and I say and share together. Hallelujah. And in fact, we are going to share it and renew it today. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. So you know how to let your heart be troubled. So you see now how you will let your heart be troubled if you don't know these things. If you don't know what is in the will for you, how can your heart not be troubled? When somebody accuses you falsely, when somebody maltreats you, when somebody underestimates you as a human being, because you don't know the will of your father, That's right. who is in heaven, then you will start to be a loser. Amen. You will start to begin to trouble. And if you don't be careful, by getting your heart troubled, by getting your heart worried, there is something that is going to happen. Unbelief will begin to show up. You begin to offend God through your unbelief. You begin to offend God through doubt. And doubt is not of God, it's of the devil. Then you begin to fear. Fear is not of God, fear is of the devil. You fear because why you don't know what is in the will for you for your, from your father. So I don't care if you have put me in a pit. My God is able to lift me up and put me on a rock. Untouchable. Unshakable. Unmovable. Hallelujah. He will put you on a rock. Have you ever seen somebody trying to disgrace you? He has done all the good, but he cannot. It is not by your power. It's not by your understanding. It's not by your wisdom. It's not by your strength. It's not by your might. But by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. That is the type of God that we are serving. And here this morning to encourage you in the things of God. So that you will know which position you carry. What is it that is it for you in your will, in the will of the Father for you? You have to know. Psalm 23. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Amen. Psalm 23. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. Who is a shepherd? Shepherd. Who is a shepherd? A shepherd is the one that guards the sheep. So God is taking you as an ordinary sheep. Do who does not know is left from his rights. In other words, you are like a baby before God. You are still having a pacifier in your mouth in the sight of God. You are still sucking milk. Hallelujah! So the Lord is your shepherd. So if the Lord, the Bible a story in the Bible that says, there was one man who had wounded sheep. One of them was missing. They left the 99 in the cage and ran after the one. That one is you. Amen. Hallelujah. I say that one is you because God is interested in you. He will not leave no stone on top if you are missing in his presence. That is what is in the will of God for you. Jeremiah 29 11 says, if you know the thoughts that I have for you, you will run for your life. You come to me. That's my own version. If you know the talk that I have for you, you will run for your life to change and pursue me every day. Because the beloved entire universe belongs to you. If only you can come to me. If only you can obey my word. Everything about this world is for you. Because there is no man. The Bible says when, when, when God was about to transfer the leadership from Moses to Jeshua, he uttered one statement. He said, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. There shall be no one that can stand against you. Hallelujah. That's the word of God. That's an encouraging one. You see, it is good to understand, as I said, what God has in store for your life. 
It is good to understand. When we talk about it here, let me just go enter here and come out. Please retain it in your mind. Because when you retain it in your mind, that's the time it will have effect. If you don't keep it in your mind and it goes in and flies out, then it has no impact in your life. When the problem comes, there is nothing that you stand upon. See, when you are running a race, especially in relay, how many of us have run a race in school? That is what they call a Kickstarter. Hallelujah. You have these shoes that have the spikes. So that it will, it will, it will catapult you against ahead of your, your, your fellow, fellow men. So the word of God should be the you know the spider, the spider, the king starter that will that will that will that will spring for you before. Hallelujah. So that when you know that something is going on, you can say, look when you're in the word of God, things will be going to be sitting and looking as if you don't know. Everything is clear and clear and clear before you send candles so that next you will be able to bless you. Thank you and praise you. We flush this money with the blood of Jesus. Thank you and praise your holy name. And I pray that this money be used for the entertainment purpose. We praise your holy name now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning we present this food before you. Father, we knock out and drop down every hand that is invisible right now that is stretched over the school. We push this food from every deposit that the enemy has deposited. We wash it with your blood. We declare that this food become sanctified and made holy. That this food will become meditation for the life of your children. That every night that partake of this manner God will love you more. Will increase your presence in their life. The anointing of prayer will rest upon them. And everything that is of the devil will be evicted in their life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory. We surround this food and fill it with the holy fire. Take all the praise now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.